Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to take a look at the latest trade reduction figures between the UK and the EU again in both directions and try to put them into terms that are possibly more useful to us to see the impact on both the UK and the EU. But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in terms of the headline figures, first of all, we now have two months worth of Brexit trade data. We know that British exports to the EU decreased by 47% compared to last year in January and February. We also know that EU exports to Britain decreased by 20%. So proportionally, the reduction in trade has hit the EU far less than the UK. Brexit has hit the UK harder than it hit the EU. So much for the notion that the EU needed us more than we needed them. But then that argument only worked on the gullible anyway. This of course meant that the EU trade surplus increased with Britain. Now I have to keep saying Britain because bear in mind there are two markets in the EU now, uh, sorry the UK now. We've got Northern Ireland remaining effectively in the EU's market for goods at least and that means that trade between the EU and Northern Ireland in both directions has not been hampered. In fact, there has been a boost in that trade. But in the first two months of 2020, the EU had a trade surplus with Britain of just over £16 billion. This year, by comparison, it has risen to just over £20 billion. So an increase of about a quarter. Now that's a net effect, of course, and using percentages is comparative. What neither of those figures do is to show what is the impact in a way that brings it home to ordinary people like you or I. It shows that the EU are doing better than we are out of it, nothing more. So I've run some numbers again, as per the last time I did anything like this, it's actually quite recent. The values are not going to be in pounds or euros. I mean, they need to be comparative, it needs to be the same one, but they're going to be in dollars. Now, that is the standard currency of international trade and why you get the figures in this currency most easily. But that's fine because we need to compare the EU and British trade directly. We can't compare it in pounds and euros, so we have to choose a single currency. It makes sense to use US dollars. So the data I needed for this was the loss in trade for the first two months compared to the previous year for both British exports to the EU and EU exports to Britain. What I wanted to do was express these sums of money, which are largely meaningless to us in themselves, as everyday figures jobs lost. We can understand it in terms of how many jobs is that worth. Now there's no point in dividing the trade lost by the average wages because wage distribution is far from ideal in either Britain or the EU. So GDP per capita seemed the most suitable measure here. In fact by doing this the numbers will actually look worse for the EU than they really are. The reason is that I'm going to divide the lost export trade by the GDP per capita for the EU. But most of that lost trade has come from the wealthier economies in the EU, where GDP per capita is gonna be a little bit higher compared to the average. But I'll come back to that when I'm done. So in US dollars, remember, the most recent GDP per capita figures are for 2019. Now that's actually quite handy, as it happens because they'll have tanked in 2020 and be less useful. So for the UK, our GDP per capita was just under $44,000 in 2019. In the first two months of 2021, we have lost about $18 billion in Brexit exports to the EU, as compared to the previous year. So that translates into about 412,000 jobs in just two months. Two months, 412,000 jobs worth of trade lost. Now, if that trade ended up at the annual average when 2021 is done, that would mean nearly two and a half million jobs lost in Britain due to trade losses with the EU. Sure, some of that is down to the pandemic. Absolutely. But the thing is that Brexit was sold on the notion of us not needing all that lovely EU trade. Well, we do. Just in the first two months, 400,000 jobs lost. Unless, of course, the government compensates to keep them going for a bit and hopes things pick up. So it doesn't necessarily mean it will be 400,000 jobs actually lost. It just means 400,000 jobs worth of trade lost 
for which public money is going to be have to use to, to keep some of those people going. But it can't keep all of them going, so that is going to be people losing their jobs. Then we look at the EU side of things. So when we run the same maths, we find about 323,000 jobs worth of trade lost in the first two months alone. Now, I said before that the real number will actually be lower. That's because I'm using the EU average GDP per capita when most of the EU lost trade to Britain was in wealthier countries like Germany, France and so on. So a much more detailed analysis would actually reduce that figure. But for comparative purposes, it's not going to be too far out. And, and the bottom line is that that is less than the jobs cost for Britain, significantly less. So we don't have to argue about the nth degree. And, and this wasn't obvious just by looking at the percentage drop in trade, because you could say, well, the Britain lost 47% of exports to the EU by value, and the EU was only 20%. Well, that's way lower, of course. The EU looked like they were doing better. You know, and, and that's what you see in the media reports. That's the percentages, but that's fine. But because the EU has a much larger economy than Britain alone, what looks like a smaller percentage decline for the EU could have been a higher real cost in terms of trade figures and jobs. But it isn't. It's not just a proportionally lower impact for the EU, it's an actually lower impact. And again, there are a few things that could reduce the actual impact on the jobs in the EU further. The first, as I've already said, a disproportionate um, amount of that lost export trade to Britain was from countries with a higher GDP than average. So that would mean it's not actually as many lost jobs. It's still significant though. Secondly, the EU are at least as likely as the UK government to try and use public money to save some of those jobs. In other words, compensation. Arguably more likely. Certainly Brexit compensation from the EU has been rolled out more quickly in the EU than in the UK, where a lot of sectors haven't even had promises of money to come. Thirdly, EU businesses are part of a much larger market than Britain and have more comprehensive network of trade agreements with countries outside of their bloc. As such, it will be quicker and easier for them to compensate for some of that lost trade. Now, that being said, I did see a comment on social media recently that seemed to downplay the impact of Brexit on the EU altogether. Yes, it's significantly less than the impact on Britain, but the impact on Britain has been huge. Yes, those exports to Britain represent a way lower proportion of overall exports as compared to the British exports to the EU. But for an area the size of the EU, even a small percentage loss of trade means a lot of lost jobs. And it's really fairly straightforward. Although not a strong correlation due to poor wealth distribution in economies around the world, economic growth nonetheless tends to mean jobs creation. Economic contraction job losses. Now, the impact may be less in the EU, but it's still a net loss of trade. That means a net loss of jobs. That's not people losing their jobs and having to get new ones either. In the mix are people losing their jobs and getting new ones. It's businesses closing down, but other ones opening up. For example, to take advantage of the movement of assets from London to the EU's financial centres, or the new trading routes that are bypassing the British land bridge. But the net effect is still a loss. And that means that there is a net loss of jobs in the EU, just like in Britain. Just because it's less, and proportionally way less, doesn't mean it isn't a tragedy for all those individuals who have suffered on both sides of the Brexit border as a result of this wholly unnecessary wind that has blown nobody any good. Except for Boris Johnson and his cronies, I suppose. But there we are. I think if we want to look at trade figures, I tend to think of them in terms of jobs worth of trade. We can't really comprehend billions of pounds. The figures are simply too large for people to understand. Is, is that a big problem? Is that a lot of money or is that not a lot of money? Put it into job losses or job growth and all of a sudden I think people can get a better handle on it. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. Until next time, I'll see you later.